a very egalitarian system, or sometimes it can be done with one person who has enough aptitude for all of it. All right. Immersion, we have all kinds of processes. You do too. This is just enough design research to know what you're trying to solve. Some sort of concept mapping. You needed to have a loop structure, not a detail requirement structure because you're not going to get there, but a loop structure to kind of guide you through the process. Concept map. Gender whiteboarding is probably the most interesting step, so I'm going to spend a little more time on it. That's where we get everyone in the room in front of whiteboards. You can use paper, you can use software tools if you want. But there's, it's, a, it's like a forced exercise, usually three days, eight hours. Everyone to so pass the time exercise has to put an interaction model up on the board. So during immersion, you got time to think about what the interaction model might be. When you do it on whiteboards, it can happen really fast. If you have a really big whiteboard, you can sketch out the few steps and everything. Everyone has to give their interaction model a name, and hopefully it's a clever name so you can remember it. And then you go away. The next day, you do it again. Hold on, Jared. What happens when a client or a stakeholder comes in with some baggage? Like oh. political business, they don't yes. they think they have the best idea. That's a good question. I like to get the client involved in this actually when I can. And the thing is, is when they have that baggage, because sometimes the clients are like, oh, they're up here or they're down here with their capability, and they always come to you with the idea in their mind anyways. And sometimes they try to trick you. They want to see if you're going to produce that idea. <laughs> it's a big waste of money. If, if on week two of the program Monday you have them in there and you give them a market, all that baggage goes away. Because they have to draw their interaction model up on the board, and then all the cards are out. And then, you know, they're either great, and they do it, and it's a great idea, and you can move on to it, or they'll see that it's not. The, the act of actually drawing this out on the board, and literally, here's a button, press this, now this screen comes up, this screen comes up. It really does a lot to just shake out 90% of the fluff right away. Right away. And so, to answer your question, you put the marker in their hand, and the baggage goes away really rapid. And we've had great success. We did one example I'm going to show you later, we didn't have to go to three, the, the original idea came up in four hours. It took two years to build the rest of the product, but we pretty much had 90% of the interaction model in four hours. So it's all about trusting your gut first while. We hit the lottery on that one, obviously. We have the first one that did actually fall through very well. Uh, then we select the first one, Greg. Yeah, uh, I was just going to ask when, obviously a lot of people don't think about uh, interaction models when they come into this when somebody doesn't know what to write on the whiteboard, what do you do? Okay, kind of just add them through it. <laughs> no other tips for like, you know, how to, how to think about that. Well, you can't force it. Not this, I have not in this session. Not in this session, I think it's good, I don't know. Um, I'm not the right guy to ask that question. I just pushed him and said, God, you can do it. Draw a square, draw another square. 